now that I know that they literally stop you if you're doing too well, sports betting is hilarious to me, okay? They literally are like, oh, no, you're doing too good. Uh, you can no longer bet. What happened in Vegas used to have to stay in Vegas, at least when it came to betting on sports. But that's changed dramatically in the past few years, with more than 30 states and the District of Columbia allowing legal betting on games in person, online, or both. It's projected to be a $129 billion industry by 2028. And as Brooke Silva Braga shows us, betting has become increasingly intertwined with the games themselves. On a Wednesday afternoon in Pittsburgh, a journeyman catcher stepped to the plate. And strike to Tyler Heineman. But even this low stakes baseball moment had people betting on what Tyler would do next. He's about four to one to strike out, five to one to hit a single. In FanDuel's New Jersey office, trader Tom Heenan tweaked the odds while his boss, Will Twin, looked on. And this is a big part of what we try and do. We want to give a really innovative betting experience for our customers. What the f FanDuel has. FanDuel has hired Australians, dude. Shut it down. Shut it down. My man said innovative. Lead off walk. Okay, he walked. Someone had walk. Someone did. At 13 to 1. Oh, that's pretty good. They turned their 100 into 1300 for a walk. Sports bets used to be placed in Las Vegas before the game started. The odds or point spreads were never discussed during the broadcast. And don't forget to play FanDuel's over under game. For now, in-game betting made from a phone. What you need to do is download the BetMGM Sportsbook app. Is promoted seemingly constantly. He scored. It's, this is what I was talking about when I said uh, sports betting, sports books are going to turn America into Australia. It's going to ruin this country. More economies of despair, baby. That's it. We do know how to make our people have the highest amount of gambling debt. Yeah, I know. That's why I said that's Australia, by the way, up there. But uh, you can't see here because I don't have a Statista account. But scored a touchdown in eight of the last 10 games. Mike Raffensperger is FanDuel's chief marketing officer. I personally think there may be no more disruptive force in sports than gaming. And you must think that's a good thing. I think it's an excellent thing. And by the way, we're the official awesome. sports book of the NFL, the NBA, the NHL. We have a longstanding partnership with MLB, the WTA, the PGA. The leagues think so too. It's a remarkable reversal for the leagues. Just 10 years ago, they sued New Jersey to stop sports gaming. Here's NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell five years ago. We still strongly oppose legalized sports gambling. But in 2018, the Supreme Court ruled New Jersey and other states could legalize sports betting. I think there were a good amount of people that were that were shocked. Darren Ravel, who covers the industry for the sports gaming website, The Action Network, says leagues that once insisted betting months. would compromise the integrity of their sports have adopted a new position that gambling supercharges fan engagement. It I mean, yeah, that this is it's it's very obvious what's going on here. Twitter account ISIS member has responded to you talking about them on stream. They fucking follow me too. Member. Like, I'm not clicking on that. I don't know what today. the fuck's going on there, but Twitter account ISIS member posted the most fire tweet. It's like, I'm not touching that. It does seem a little bit insane how you could so oppose something and then now you're fully into it. Why do you think the switch? It's just, it's just money. Pirates at minus 124. The money is flowing into sponsored pregame segments and in stadium billboards and naming rights. It's flowing into commercials. You think Boston's gonna cover? Why, you know something I know? And more commercials. You know what to do. And more and more and more commercials. At least glass is solid gold. The bet is that there's gonna be losers here. And it's part of the event, and doing bets on events that sorts has been done since ages. It's just important that there are solid regulations for children and so on. Brother, are you fucking nuts? At least, like, when it was black market or when it was, like, somewhat illegal, people were still doing it, but it wasn't, like, directly advertised to your fucking face. Thanks, Hazen. Okay? When it's directly advertised to your face, when all bets are off, no pun intended, but actually pun intended, okay? 
all of a sudden, they're like, even even motherfuckers who are like, oh, I don't really know about this. They go, oh, wait a minute. It's so easy. I'll just get on the app and do it. We need to disincentivize gambling and all of their antisocial behavior. Like, come on. This chat is so fucking libbed up. I just, I, I think that it's really fucking bad. I, I, I do. Mom, Especially because, like, the same leave. things I mentioned when I talked about, like, alcohol addiction, which is crippling, only, which is awful. You will be victorious. Okay. Alcohol addiction is crippling. It's awful. It'll kill you. It's really fucked up. It'll ruin your life, right? But alcohol doesn't materialize in your fucking pocket when you see it on TV. This, you literally are like, oh, gambling? Sick. Boom. Downloaded the app. That's it. You're done. You're in. Okay? It also ruins sports. If you think that, like, money is not going to be a reason for why these fucking games, like, prop betting is a huge part of betting, right? It's going to now be like, you're going to have longer games with like weirder shit happening specifically for that. It makes the games way more interesting though, in my opinion. Yeah, because now you have money on it, man. If the games were interesting on their own, you would just watch them. If the games were interesting on their own, you would just watch the games. You wouldn't need to drink alcohol to make it more fun. And you wouldn't need to fucking gamble to, to feel like you have a stake in the matter. And yes, this guy does look like Jank, white Jank. And that's why, you know, this is a good business. I need another tutty out of him for seven okay. fifty. It's All not right. looking too good right now. Right. At FanDuel's new facility inside the Mohegan Sun Casino in Connecticut, <laughs> even a brick and mortar sports book has a different feel. Six, seven, Picks that win or lose in a matter of minutes. This is gonna be a bet on what's gonna happen next. First touchdown score. All right. Even with betting windows and kiosks right there, many fans still buried in the app. They could use it home. Jaguars money line, Trevor over. And everywhere, parlays. These are bets that have a lot going on in them. Yeah, that's right. Bets that require many picks to all go right. We got a 17 left. My stepdad just put 50 on the Mariners, uh, making the playoffs. He's done this every year since 2001. He made so much goddamn money this weekend. I'm Happy for you, Just Lane. No, 17 legs. 17 I mean, legs. come on. You might as well buy a lottery ticket. Sportsbooks now heavily promote these exotic bets. You can win a lot of money on a small bet. The long odds benefit the house. <laughs> Fans like how much excitement you can buy for a few dollars. Do you do this for money or do you do it for fun? For fun. But they're also quick to bring up those rare magic occasions. He hit five during the NBA season. When 20 bucks turned into something like 4,600. What do you remember about that night? I was sweating, pacing around my room. How much of the 4,600 do you still have? Not much. I lost 500 the next day. In the front row of the sports book, we found Kenny Ackerman, a self-described lifelong gambler from Connecticut, who can finally legally bet on sports in his home state. This didn't exist, like, really recently. It's a whole different world. Yeah. What do you make of that? Sports betting is so funny. Now that I know that they literally stop you if you're doing too well, sports betting is hilarious to me, okay? They literally are like, oh, no, you're doing too good. Uh, you can no longer bet. That's insane, okay? Yeah, a lot of people don't know this. I didn't know it either. You can actually get fucking limited, rate limited at a sports book if you're killing it, okay? Because, like, ultimately, there's a lot of luck involved in sports, obviously. But it's, it's, like, it's like the stock market. The stock market has a gambling component to it. Of course, it's like luck-based gambling, too, but there's skill involved in it as well. And with sports betting, it's the same shit. If you're winning too much during sports betting, because you, like, you could literally, not any of you dumbasses, but some people could literally fucking... Uh, uh, win frequently they will stop you I looked up the limit after you said that and recently FanDuel upped their per, uh, per day win limit to 1 million a day cap oh my god it used to be 75k you won $75,000 in one day on, uh, on, on FanDuel they were like you're done you're out now they're like you can make up to a million dollars a day it tells you how profitable they are yeah holy shit they can fucking tank a $1 million bet. Arbing is a legit way to profit from sports betting regardless of the outcome. Most gambling sites will refuse your bets if they suspect you're arbing. What the fuck is arbing? Oh, 
arbitrage. Oh, betting on both sides. Oh, 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 oh. Arbitrage betting? Betting from an Arby's. The main component that makes sports so wonderful is the element of uh is the is the element of of probability. Okay? You got skill versus skill. You got players that are working hard, playing hard, fighting against one another, and it's real and it's honest, okay? the closest we can ever get to a meritocracy. This level of involvement from the gambling industry will completely destroy that. I'm sorry, dude. When there's too much, when there's billions at stake, all of a sudden, it's not going to be pure. Now, it was never pure, obviously, but if you think that they're not going to do match fixing and shit, you are fucking crazy, dude. That element of uncertainty goes away in that position. That's why motherfuckers say NBA's been, uh, NBA has been uh, fixed. It's always been the meta to just say that it's been fixed, but now it will be the reality. Well, NBA has been fixed too. I mean, through referees, but that's different. Uh, I think it's bad for society. I mean, I like it. It's fun, but I think overall access to all these apps and gambling sites on the internet is... People get addicted to it, and I think they, they gamble too much, and, the, and it's going to hurt a lot of people. We know from history, the more access people have to gambling, the more problem gamblers we're going to have. Why should people be excited about the expansion of this thing that we know is going to lead to bad outcomes for many people? So I challenged maybe the, the assumption in the question. Betting was happening before legal, regulated American companies were running it. We really... I hate this argument, man. It's so dumb. You're literally unshackling it, though. And in the larger you grow, the more legitimate you become, the less restrictive those regulations, those regulatory forces are going to be because America is not a real democracy. It is an oligarch. It's literally just an oligarchy, okay? You got whoever has the most money wins operate under a principle that this is a form of entertainment and it should be fun and have put a ton of effort around responsible gaming efforts. Those efforts include sponsoring a weekly radio show in New York devoted to responsible gaming. My story and personal history with gambling has been well documented. But that won't outweigh uh -huh. the impact of all the gambling hype out there now. We have this on Fando already. You can bet this. According to gambling addiction counselor Rick Benson. And what we are seeing, not surprisingly. Damn, bro. You know what else he's addicted to? Fucking being drippy, okay? God damn. This guy is sick, okay? What a sick, what a cool dude. Many of these young gamblers are as addicted to their cell phone as they are to the gambler. Benson was a problem gambler himself, but over time has found it possible to safely enjoy sports. I still make it a point to stay away from point spreads. Point spreads and What? Dog. The gambling counselor is like, yeah, you can still gamble safely. That's awesome. Dude, he still gambles, dude. He's like, I right, just don't do big spreads. <laughs> Motherfucker, it didn't take. It didn't take, brother. I didn't want to say anything because he had the weirdest necklace, but like he has such a gambling ass look. Like he looked like he still definitely gambles, okay? This is my counselor, dog. We're both gambling this weekend. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Money lines are none of my business. It's hard to watch a game now, though, without seeing them on the screen. Do you think that's a problem for gamblers in recovery? I think it's a problem for gamblers who are still gamblers and, and some gamblers in recovery. Absolutely. I think it's a problem. But it's unlikely to change. So let's take a look at FanDuel Sportsbook Live Point Totals. One gaming executive described the situation to us as a prisoner's dilemma, pushing sportsbooks, leagues, and broadcast networks Stack the cash. Stack the cash. into ever more aggressive marketing. The touts and everyone else have been disingenuous about losing, have not talked overtly about bankroll. Just because you can live bet something and it's available, 
doesn't mean you should do it. Risk free bet up to $1,000. But ironically, it's the cost of all this promotion that could ultimately slow it down. Most sports books are spending more on marketing than they're bringing in. A gamble that will leave just a couple big winners. Many of the companies now taking bets, just like the people placing them, will eventually be out of cash. I also have them a different part of that money line. For CBS Saturday Morning, Brooke Silva Braga. Uncasville, Connecticut. It's a really interesting dilemma in how much of this, when you look at addiction and the possibility and this accessibility and the money that can be raised for states because there's a percentage that goes to the states as well. I, it's fascinating to me how it also is now with this younger audience. Yeah. My son yeah. at 11 knows about yeah. gambling. Yeah, they all do, everyone, because you see the ads so much yeah. now. Yeah. And as long as you're, if you're doing it, with money you can lose. That's yeah. the thing. And understand that the house always wins. wins. <laughs> right. Uh, well, but it, can, it, it is an engagement factor. For yeah, casino you know, floor on steroids in the pocket of your hand. We'll see you next. Toothpaste doesn't we'll go back, back in the tube. Dude, that's crazy.